tonight on KSL Outdoors. Yes! First Coke of the year. First Coke of the year. We head to the gorge to catch Cokes. It's a bigger one. And some spunky rainbows. Plus, how could you not love this? It's ice off at the berry, baby. I'm Adam Eichel, and this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eakel is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Hey, thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eakel. You know, it was a few months ago we brought you up here to Flaming Gorge to talk about the large pup population they have here at the Gorge and how biologists are pretty concerned. That was on the Wyoming side. Tonight, we're going to take you into the Utah side with my biologist buddy, Ryan Mosley. We're going to show you some of the fantastic rainbow trout fishery that's going on here right now. Plus, we're going to preview the fishery a little bit and maybe catch a coke or two. One thing you learn when fishing with my buddy Ryan is... Yeah, people have been getting some pretty fast catch rates up there. He so is always on the, the phone, Canadian, answering questions too. from anglers Lake about the fishery the here, giving them tips and techniques on what to use and where to try. I was hoping today his walk... Okay, good luck to you. ...was as good as his talk. I usually don't spend a lot of time targeting cokes, especially with trolling methods, you know, until the water temps get in the 50s. It's 45 degrees surface temp today. But it's a nice overcast day. We've had a little bit of drizzle, and that, that's usually pretty good. Keeps kokanee right up close to the surface where the water's a little bit warmer and the plankton's more abundant. And with an overcast day like that, that's not uncommon to see them closer to the surface. How far out, Dad? 100? 120. Oh, Joining us is Ryan's son, Colby, who is a pretty good fisher in his own right. This is the first time Ryan has been out on his boat targeting kokanee this year, and admittedly, we're a bit early. But Ryan is optimistic not only about today, but about the numbers of kokanee anglers we'll see this year. You know, it's going to be really good catch rates. We've had a really good abundance estimate the last few years, and we had an exceptional one last year. It was like the second highest that we recorded. Uh, what that'll mean is the next few years will be really good. Uh, this year you probably expect to catch some smaller fish mixed in there. Uh, but yeah, the, the next few years look really good. I'm excited about it. Yes! First Coke of the year. First Coke of the year. Nice. I'm, I'm going to be really gentle with this one. We're not going to, I don't want to lose it. No camera jinx. This, if you lose this and it goes on there, then you're really going to get a lot of crap. Fish. Right. If you lose it, we'll blame it on Kobe. <laughs> we better not straighten the hook on this. <laughs> right? <laughs> Here he comes, running the boat. Don't lose him. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Coke number one. 2018. Heck yeah, it's a good one. It's a good start. Remember, we just marked those fish yeah. at 25 feet. So we'll get this back in and we'll go back through there again. Hope we can get a, at least get me a limit. That's shallow, right? For this time, oh, no, I guess this time of year, you should probably start shallow. Oh, yeah. You know, we got these planter boards out. They're only pulling 10 feet under the surface, but we marked some fish at 25 there and, and hooked up a, a couple minutes later. So last year, you were seeing pretty good sized fish in the canyon reach. We did. It wasn't uncommon to get three pounders down here. You know, a lot of people uh, run into the upper lake areas to go target bigger fish, but sometimes those areas can get pretty concentrated with anglers too. So I, I stayed down lake last year along with a lot of the people that, you know, I run with and we had some pretty good fish down here. I actually had one fish in the boat that was about four pounds. Out there back there dancing behind the dodger. Still going to be some bigger fish. You know, some of the fish that we caught today are three year olds, you know, and they're going to be in that three pound size class by the end of the summer. I feel like I'm hogging all the fishing. Right? It, this just doesn't happen. Usually I'm like netting and taking gear off and holding Adam's hand. Oh, it's big. Everything we've caught has been on dodgers and squids. The squids we're using are mini squids, but we've caught them on a variety of colors. You know, we've got them on uh, a watermelon color. We got another one on a green. We got a couple on different colors of pinks, different depths, but we're everywhere from 10 feet to 25 feet. So we're, we're pretty close to the surface. Makes it real tough because you can't necessarily see them on your graph. So you kind of have to deploy this gear and, and set it out and hope for the best. 
when you get into them, just continue to make figure eights on them, and yeah, and that's what worked for us. First limit of 2018. Next up, we switch tactics and target rainbow trout. But first, let's test your knowledge of the area in tonight's climate quiz question. Major John Wesley Powell and his crew of nine men are credited with naming Flaming Gorge when they were impressed by the beauty of the sun's reflection off the brilliant red gorge that looked from a distance as if it were on fire. That was on May 27, 1869. But they were not the first white men to bolt through Flaming Gorge. Our climate quiz question tonight is, who led the first expedition down the Green River in 1825? Here's a hint. The forest surrounding Flaming Gorge is named after this person. Now, once you know this person's name, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page. Give us the correct answer. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our page the following week. The winner set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. Climate, comfortable, rugged, and lightweight. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford. Be right back to the gorge. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Smith & Edwards, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Climate, King's Camo, and Camp Chef. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here at Flaming Gorge. Well, we caught some kokanee this morning. Now, Ryan says the best fishing on the reservoir right now is the rainbow trout fishing. So, we're going to go give it a try. Yeah, definitely the rainbow fishing's really been good this uh, late winter and spring. So, when you're looking for rainbows, where do you start looking? There's a lot of different places to look for them on the reservoir. Near inflows, wherever there's water coming in. This time of year when you've got runoff, there's water pouring in all these canyons. Yeah. Uh, yesterday we were targeting real shallow rocky points. Uh, they'll stack up in those locations and they'll try to spawn on those locations too. This is nice though because it's a little protected back here. So we'll see if we can get any. I only got three here. Four. Ooh, I'm sorry. Four. Four. That's right a good here. one. Look like a spawned out fish. That's a good yeah. fish. Uh, using a marabou jig, letting it float and bounce off the bottom. Uh, they really like it when it sinks, so if you let it, if you stop reeling for a little bit, let it sink, let it drop, and then they normally hit right about then. Yeah. You caught very many fish using this? Oh yeah, I've caught tons. <laughs> a lot more than my dad and the eagle has. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. That's it's a, a bigger one. one. Yeah, it's a bigger one, dude. Look at that. Pretty fish. Three pounds? Two Ooh. And a half. Yeah, two and a half, I'd say. They're either you know pre-spawn or spawning. Uh, we handled some of those bigger fish yesterday, and they were definitely soft-bellied. You know, the females with a lot of eggs in them. So uh, it's just starting. You know, water temperatures are about 45 degrees right now. So I can I would expect you know rainbow fishing to just continue to get better over the next few weeks. Everything starts happening, you know, about that mid-50 mark. Um, late May, June, it's whatever you want to target. It can be an exceptional. Uh, smallmouth bass get really active during that time period. Rainbow trout will still be active. Uh, kokanee really get good, and they get more consistent. Oh, got it. From day to day and location. Uh, and then, of course, lake trout uh, get a lot, lot more active as their prey sources get active. It'll be a really good time to come up and target uh, lake trout pups too. You never quite know what you're going to catch or see here on the canyon reach of Flaming Gorge. The wildlife, the fishing, and the scenery here is downright spectacular. He's out fishing you by the way. It's a great place during the spring and the summer. For a kid like Colby who lives here, he can't get enough. It's an hour to Walmart but it's pretty amazing all the stuff you can see. Pretty fortunate to grow up here. Yes sir, I wouldn't change anything for the world. Nice fish. Well, you know, if you're not going to come up here and catch the kokanee, you don't know how, or maybe they're not on, you can always come and catch a lot of these rainbows, especially this time of year, like Rhino was saying. They're spawning, and uh, there's some pretty fish. They're healthy, and I dare say they're almost as good, not as good, but almost as good as catching a kokanee. Hey, more here in a moment, but first, back to the guys at Fish Tech for tonight's fishing report. Thanks, buddy. Hi, I'm Mike Cooper for this week's Fish Tech fishing tip. 
One of the things I like to do on still water is when I'm using a floating line and an indicator is I put a furled leader on the end of my floating line. This allows me to roll cast a lot further than I normally would as well as getting the leader to float higher and drier. After you put your furrow leader on, coat it with payette paste, and that keeps it floating high and dry. The furrow leaders come with either a swivel or a tippet ring. I like to use fluorocarbon below the tippet ring because it's invisible and it sinks quick. At Fish Tech, we have four types of furrow leaders. We've got three floating, one for big bugs with the swivel on the end, one for a 5-6 weight and one for a 4-5 weight. Each of these have tippet rings. And then we've also got the fluorocarbon big bug for sinking lines. I like to combine my furrow leader with amplitude fly line. The combination of these two really gives me the distance that I need. And if you're fishing ice off at strawberry, sometimes a roll cast is what you need to use to get to the edge of the ice. For this tip and any others, Come on down to Fish Tech and we'll help you out. Now for tonight's fishing line. Hey, welcome back to KSL Outdoors. We had to come and show you. We just couldn't hold back. We had to move from Flaming Gorge to Strawberry, Paul. Ice is perfect. Oh, we hit it just perfect this year. We chased it two years in a row and missed it, and this year is awesome. All right, you brought Got a it. ringer. Don, Don <laughs> Meekham, how you doing, sir? Good, good, great to see you. You too. Good to be here. It's good. I heard you went for a swim yesterday. Yeah, uh, we had a three pound rainbow. Take my ugly stick right into the water. <laughs> <laughs> I went in waist deep. It was uh, it was me or the rainbow, and I won last time. Ate the fish. Yeah, ate the fish. Well, let's go get some more. You ready, Don Hume? Let's go. Let's do it. Never made ice out at Strawberry. What? Never happened. I, I always get here too late. We're not late today. In fact, we hit it just right. Hey, oh, that's a good one, Don. They're so active this time of year. The ice is just barely starting to pull back from the shore on the Soldier Creek side of the berry. That's ice off right there. What was that, second cast? Yeah, yeah these are good fish. And this is the best fishing of the year right here. That's a good looking fish. There he goes. We use the lighter eight ounce jigs. And if you can just hit right in front of the ice like that. And the mistake most people make is they immediately start working it. These fish are right on bottom. And if you can kind of guess where the bottom and the moss is and the rocks start, and just kind of imagine you're working that jig right across the top of those rocks. Gosh, good one, John. It... Yank your pole out of the water. Ice pulls away from the shore and, the, and those bigger fish just cruise along the shoreline and give you uh, a chance for a real opportunity to just get a huge fish. You know something? This is why I live right here. How could you not like that? Look at that beautiful red. That's not bottom. You stole my jig, now you stole my fish. <laughs> I'm the only one that has a caught one. That's one of the prettiest rainbows I've caught in a long time. Is that Laura's dinner? No, he's too pretty. I gotta let it go. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see like a, that's a third year fish right there. Just beautiful color this time of year. Beautiful strawberry rainbow. Oh, fish on. Got a boy, Adam. Adam, that's a big fish. Holy crap, it's a big rainbow. Oh, he's beautiful. Look at that, that is why you do ice off. Big old tank rainbow. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that big old fish. That's awesome. <laughs> that is. Got him on a piece of gulp minnow. I'm just a little jig head, getting it deep. We also caught fish on black marabou jigs, white tube jigs, and power bait. Ice off is a lot of fun. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. You know, you wait all winter. The weather gets better. The ice starts pulling away. You see these big cruisers right outside the shore. It's a good time. And you, and you cut more than Paul. 
I think it's the first time ever. <laughs> it's all on film, right? <laughs> hey, the ice will stick around. You're seeing this on Saturday. We were here on Tuesday. You should have a good day on Sunday, maybe even Monday or Tuesday. Hey, more coming up here in a moment. But first, down a different trail in tonight's Utah Field Guide. Do you want to be part of an important fisheries management project in northeastern Utah? Well, here's your chance. Steinecker Reservoir, located just north of the town of Vernal, is soon to be drained for dam repairs. On May 5th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., fisheries biologists will need your help to salvage the bass that are in the reservoir. Anglers from both boats and shore are invited to come out and catch all the bass that they can so they can be prepared to transplant to other Utah waters. Please keep in mind, it is illegal to remove fish from one body of water to another without the consent from the DWR. Fishermen that want to participate need to register online or they can contact Natalie Bourne or Pat Rainbolt at the DWR Northeastern Region in Vernal. All anglers must possess a valid fishing license to participate and bring their own equipment. Lunch will be provided. It's a great chance to give back and save some bass. For more information, log on to the DWR's calendar page on their website at wildlife.utah.gov. Well, if you've never been to the canyon reach here at Flaming Gorge, you're missing out. It's pretty downright spectacular. What's nice about it is usually the wind blows on the north end of the reservoir up in Wyoming. Down here, you can usually get out of the wind like we did today. Hey, let's check out that recreation forecast now for your next outdoor adventure by turning over to the guys and gals in the weather department. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. This week, we're qualifying another person to win our all-expense-paid Alaska fishing trip to one of my favorite places to fish in the world, Pibus Point Lodge on Admiralty Island. Here's how you enter. For the next three weeks, we'll give you a keyword. This week's keyword is halibut. Now go to Facebook, find our Alaska fishing contest on our KSL Outdoors Facebook page. Click the contest, enter your information, and enter halibut for your chance to qualify. We'll then randomly select one person each week to qualify for the giveaway. Then in May, we'll take all four qualifiers out fishing, and the person to catch the longest fish will join us for a week-long adventure catching salmon, halibut, rockfish, and so much more. It truly is a trip of a lifetime. Don't forget to tell your friends and family to watch next week for the keyword and their chance at qualifying for the trip. Good luck and good fishing. You flaying or I'm flaying? You're flaying. No. I'm not screwing these up. <laughs> I know, you'll yell at me. First coax of the year. We got a little two-year-old here, Ryan says, and a three-year-old. These are just going to get bigger, better fillets. Hey, don't forget, too, when you come out like a kid here, make sure to uh, take lots of pictures, lots of videos. Submit them to our snapshot contest. You might win our big prize from Camp Chef. Now the best of the week, our snapshot of the week. We kick it off with this really cool trail camera shot that Gary got in his backyard. Gary lives next to the foothills and we're guessing he put his trail camera out to capture some wildlife. And he did. This cool shot of this hawk with a quail in its clutches. While Jeremy was out deer hunting, he stumbled across these two bull moose out feeding. Jeremy had to close the distance but was finally able to snap this really great shot. Jackson had hiked six miles searching for sheds without any luck. Then he rolled his ankle and just happened to turn 90 degrees to see his first ever elk shed and he found the match just 15 yards away. Jackson's six by seven brown set of gold is his biggest and first to date. Kylie really wanted to catch her first fish. So with an hour left of light, dad took Kylie to the local community pond and just as the sun was going down, Kylie started screaming, I got one, I got one. Ryan says this picture will be cherished forever, as will that smile. But our winner tonight had an itch to get out on the Weber, and boy are they glad they did. David Morris has been fly fishing with his son Jared since Jared was just eight years old. Now 18, Jared still enjoys getting out with the old man. The duo had two great days catching bigger fish than they normally do. Both kept shaking their heads thinking that this might have been a dream. Some cool browns there boys and the next time you two end up in a dream or on the river you'll have our cool prize to take with you as you just hauled in our snapshot of the week. 
Remember, submit your pictures or video, plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures, online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins the new Striker Multi-Fuel Stove in King's Camo, perfect for a car camp or to take on the hunt. Plus, the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. Build your outdoor kitchen with Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. I mean, I know you guys live up here and all, but I was telling him it's a pretty great place to grow up. It's a great place to raise kids, too. <laughs> <laughs> if someone has never been to the Canyon Reach of Flaming Gorge, they're really missing out. Oh, for sure. It's absolutely beautiful, whether you're talking about the reservoir or the river below it, you know, and then all the wildlife, and phenomenal. And I was surprised all the camping you can do on, on the reservoir. Yep, boat camps all over the reservoir. They'll be open in another month or two, and mm -hmm. uh, they usually open them up for Memorial Day. And, well, cool. Thanks, guys. No, thank you. Thanks for Appreciate you catching out. a couple fish. I mean, yeah. I know you struggled. Oh, yeah. it was great. It was great getting crap from you again. You know? <laughs> That's what I'm here for. At least I didn't. At least I wasn't losing fish and straightening the hooks this time. Right? There's right. That there is that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Adam Eagle. KSL Outdoors reminding you, reminding you to get out with your family, your friends, and uh, like the Mosleys here, get out, and make some memories outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.